Hello, my name is Ryan. Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are going to be talking about three ways that we can destroy our speed control, our electronic speed control in our RC applications. Now, I'm not just talking about going over the maximum continuous threshold that is written all over the speed control. I'm talking about three ways that is a little bit less obvious. See if you can guess what those may be. All right, let's get started. The first way that we're able to destroy that speed control is by going over the maximum temperature threshold for that speed control. Now, generally speaking, what I like to do is not exceed 140 Fahrenheit or about 60 degrees Celsius wherever possible. Now, some certain ESCs can go well beyond that. Um, you are able to follow those recommendations as long as they are located somewhere on that speed control manual. Now, the reason why it matters, the temperature side of things, is because if you have a 100 amp speed control, it doesn't matter if you're only drawing 70 amps from it or even 50 amps, for example, if your temperatures are well beyond what they should be. In a case like this, where you have high temperatures at a lower current draw with continuous power being drawn, what you need to focus on is getting that airflow to the speed control, or if it's in a boat, that water cooling. You have to make sure that that speed control is operating within its temperature range. That is very critical to not destroying that speed control. Number two, this is where we can have a weak battery impact the system overall. So what a weak battery does, let's say one that is aged and can't deliver the same amount of current that it once was. Now, if it's not able to deliver the same amount of current, what you'll get is you'll get a ripple voltage that happens within the speed control itself. And what a ripple voltage is, is the difference between the high amount of voltage, your peak voltage versus what you'll see as in a valley. So your peak voltage versus your low voltage. And the way that this is able to hit these two different parameters is through a voltage drop. As your speed control draws the current to the motor, you end up pulling power from the battery. Under load, your battery is gonna sag. You're gonna have that voltage sag down to the low parameter, the low bottom of the range. And then when the battery has the load reduced, it's gonna go back up to that peak voltage. So what you get is this sort of oscillating sort of uh, range of voltage, and that is known as the ripple voltage. This can certainly destroy your speed control. Generally speaking, you're looking at a maximum ripple voltage of about five to 10% of your rated pack. So whatever your voltage is that is getting input to the speed control. Now, if you get somewhere above this, let's say the 10 to 20% range, that is in a very, very critical zone. You are probably causing permanent damage if you're between 10 to 20% ripple voltage. And if you are over 20%, it's almost a guarantee that that speed control is not gonna last. It will eventually blow up on you. So that's why it's very important to make sure that we're using strong battery packs. Battery packs that can allow the current to flow to our ESC with a very small amount of voltage drop between each time it pulls a load from the battery. So reduce that voltage ripple that it goes across your battery leads will increase the lifespan of those capacitors that have to manage and handle all the different variations within the voltage and current flows through the system. That is one way that you can avoid destroying your ESC. Now the third way that we're able to destroy an ESC is through what is known as in the water and plumbing area as the hammer effect. This is something that we talked about in a previous video. Now, the way that we talked about it was relating it to plumbing within a house. If you were to take one of the faucets that you have that is able to dump a lot of water in terms of volume of water, and you have it wide open and then you shut that faucet right off, it causes all that water in the pipe, especially if that faucet is located at the furthest distance from your main, power, main water supply of the home, all that water is gonna to come to a grinding halt. As it comes to a halt, it stops right where the valve is and all the water behind it has to stop. You know, all the, each molecule in that whole entire system, what ends up happening is that as it stops, it sends a shock wave in the opposite direction. The exact same thing happens within your electronic speed control. So if you go ahead and extend the wires that exist between your battery and speed control, you make them longer, you're gonna have a buildup of current. So all that electricity that's sitting in the, 
in the wire and it's flowing in a certain direction has to stop each time the ESC sends a pulse to the motor. It has to stop, turn on, off, on, off, and it happens a very, very frequent amount of times per second. A very high amount of times. So what ends up happening is every time that it triggers, it stops, it halts that that current, you get voltage differences that's happening within those capacitors right at the input side of the electronic speed control. This is what slowly eats away at them. It slowly degrades them. If they can't handle it, they will eventually fail. And with failed capacitors, you can certainly bet that your speed control will or definitely has the possibility to fail as well. So this is the third way that we're able to destroy an electronic speed control. So my advice is take these tips, make sure that you're operating your speed control within in the correct temperature range. Make sure that you're also more obviously looking at the maximum continuous amount of current that you're able to push through the electronic speed control. And then the other two points is you want to make sure you have a very strong battery pack that's able to supply the current that's needed. That's why high C ratings is quite critical to your system. And the final point is if you are extending the leads of your ESC, you will want to extend them from the ESC to the motor side. They, these leads are okay to extend. If you have to extend the ESC leads from the ESC to the battery, you will want to look up the video on this channel that talks about how you're able to do that. All it is is adding a capacitor bank to your speed control and then you're good to go. Now if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video on Monday. Thank you for watching.